What's happening guys, I'm from Techsaurus, and before the year ends, I wanna go over three separate PC configurations for all types of budgets. Starting with an entry-level 1080p gaming PC for less than $500, then we have a mid-range $1,000 gaming and streaming PC with an RTX 2070, and for the ballers out there that want to build a beast 4K gaming machine that can also be used for streaming, content creation, and pretty much anything else really, then I got one just for you that cost $3,000. I'm also going to be building one of these PCs on the channel, but I want you guys to vote and let me know which one in the comment section down below. I'll be doing a full build guide as well as an overclocking tutorial with Windows installation and all of that, so do keep that in mind. Um, also, if this video gets 6,000 likes, I'll pick one random person in the comment section and I'll send over the parts for the budget PC, which is the first PC I'm going to be talking about in this video. And uh, if you guys live outside of the country, I'm just going to send you $500 in cash so that we can avoid customs and shipping costs and stuff like that. Uh, winner will be announced January 15th on my Twitter account. Also, since Christmas is around the corner, I teamed up with MSI on their best tech gift ideas on their 1225. If you guys are interested in it, I'll drop a link to it down below. All right, so the first build is gonna cost you a little less than $500, and that's including the Windows 10 CD key, which you can buy for just $15. We're going with the 2200G quad-core processor, which offers a lot of performance for the money. The 2200G is very popular in budget builds because of the overclockability. You can easily push it to 3.8 gigahertz on the stock cooler or 3.9 if you're lucky. There's a great tutorial on overclocking, which I will link below if you guys wanna check it out. I didn't wanna cheap out on the motherboard and I wanted something with future expandability. So the B450M Bazooka from MSI has a decent price and some nice features. For starters, it supports overclocking, it has four DIMM slots, M.2 support and three fan headers. The board does support RAM up to 3466 MHz, but we're going with two sticks for a total of eight gigs at 3000 MHz from Team Vulcan, which fits perfectly within our budget. And since we do have two extra DIMM slots on the board, you can always add an extra eight gigs of RAM in the future if you do end up upgrading. For storage, we're keeping it simple with a one terabyte hard drive from Hitachi. However, if you have a slightly higher budget, consider buying a 120 gigabyte SSD for the operating system. For the GPU, I went with the RX 570 four gigabyte card because that's currently the best bang for your buck GPU under $200 for 1080p gaming. When you look at the benchmarks, you can see that it outperforms the GTX 1050 Ti in almost every game. It's also cheaper than the GTX 1050 Ti by around $20, making it the obvious choice for this budget build. You can go with any RX 570 four gigabyte card out there, just make sure you're not spending more than $150 on the GPU. The case we're going with is super cheap. It's only $27 and it's from Rosewell. I tried to save as much money as I could on the case, but at the same time, not get something really crappy. For the price, it's actually not a bad case. It's got a see-through side panel, four USB ports in the front, two of which are USB 3, and it comes with two pre-installed fans. We got a single 120 millimeter fan in the front and an 80 millimeter fan for the rear. It's definitely not the best looking case out there, but for $27, I think it's a steal. Finally, powering the PC is a 500 watt bronze certified power supply from EVGA, which is going for $38. If you plan on picking up a Windows 10 CD key for $15, that will bring your total up to $4.99 and 44 cents before tax and shipping. So that's your entry level gaming PC under $500. Now let's move on to something with a little more power. This build is for anyone that wants to game in Quad HD resolution over 60 FPS or wants to max out most games in 1080p in the highest settings over 100 FPS. This build is gonna cost you a little over $1,000, but this time we're going with the Ryzen 5 2600 for several reasons. First of all, once you overclock the 2600, you will get pretty much the same performance as the 2600X. It just doesn't make any sense spending an extra $45 to get the same thing. In almost all the benchmarks, the performance is nearly identical. You can even overclock the CPU using the stock cooler. It can easily hit anywhere from four to 4.3 gigahertz. The second reason is that the 2600 is on par with the i3-8400 when it comes to 1440p gaming and it's $55 cheaper than the i5, so you're getting more bang for your buck. The motherboard we're going with is the B450M Mordar. It's a micro ATX board but it also has two PCI slots, it's got support for two M.2 SSDs and four DIMM slots. It even has some RGB lighting on the side and two additional RGB headers on the board. This is a really popular micro ATX board and it's been sold out for a while now, so make sure to check back after Christmas if you want to pick one up. For RAM, we're sticking with the usual eight gigs from Team Vulcan at 3000 megahertz, but once again, there is room for two additional sticks if needed. For storage, we're going with a simple one terabyte hard drive from WD. Once again, guys, I'm focusing more on gaming performance, so feel free to throw in an M.2 or an SSD if you like. 
Now for the graphics card, we're going with the RTX 2070. With this GPU, you will either game comfortably in 1440p over 60 FPS, or if you're gaming in 1080p, you can expect average frames over 100 in max settings across most games, according to the benchmarks. The case I picked up for this build is the Ducase or Ducasi from Deepcool, I don't even know how you say that, which is an all-white mid-tower case. It has a clear side panel with a single USB 3 port in the front, and the case comes with two pre-installed fans. There's a lot of good looking cases out there between $50 and $60, so if this one doesn't look appealing to you, then feel free to look around for something that does. Finally, powering the build is a 650 watt power supply from Rosewill. This is actually a really good price for a fully modular power supply that's gold certified. This entire build will cost you a little over $1,000 before tax and shipping, but it's a solid gaming and streaming PC, which can also be used for productivity since it does have 6 cores and 12 threads. So any applications that utilize multiple cores will take advantage of this build. Last but not least, for my ballers out there, we have a souped up gaming machine that will keep you happy and satisfied for a long time. Now this is for anyone that wants to game comfortably in 4K resolution, or someone that is looking for a PC that can handle heavy multi-core applications, or maybe someone that wants both. You can pretty much do anything with this configuration, but you're gonna pay a pretty penny for it. For starters, we are throwing in the best gaming CPU in the market right now, the 8th core 9900K. It doesn't beat the 8700K by much, but nonetheless, if you're looking for the best of the best, this is it when it comes to gaming. We do need to cool this bad boy since we are gonna overclock it. The H159 from Corsair should get the job done, and it will look good doing it too. With a 240 millimeter radiator with RGB goodness. I didn't want to go completely overkill on the motherboard since we're not doing SLI or any crazy water cooling. So the MSI Meg Z390 is actually the sweet spot when it comes to features, design, and price. It pretty much has everything you need to build a high-end gaming PC. For starters, it has a 12 power phase delivery with two 8-pin EPC connectors, which will help in getting a smooth and stable overclock. It also comes with wireless AC and some RGB lighting on the heatsink, so a pretty solid board for the money. Now for RAM, we're going with a total of 32 gigs at 3200 megahertz from the popular Trident Z RGB sticks. For storage, we do have some options this time around. After all, it is a high-end build. So we're throwing in a 250GB M.2 SSD, which will have the operating system installed on. We're also throwing in a 1TB SSD for all the games and applications that we want to boot fast from. And finally, a 2TB hard drive for all the junk and miscellaneous files. The RTX 2080 Ti is a no-brainer for this price point. It's currently the fastest GPU out right now, well, aside from the Titan RTX, but that's way overpriced right now. Uh, but with the RTX 2080 Ti, you should be able to game comfortably in 4K resolution over 60 FPS in most titles. The case we're going with on this build is the H500P from Cooler Master, which I've actually done a build in a while back on the channel. One of the reasons why I really like this case, other than the design, is the airflow. You get two massive 200 millimeter RGB fans in the front and a 140 millimeter fan in the rear. It also has a PSU shroud and a vertical GPU mount. It's just an all around sexy case with really good airflow. I mean, we're gonna be overclocking both the CPU and GPU, so airflow is gonna be really important in this build. And finally, powering all the components is the 1000 watt platinum certified power supply from Corsair. This build is gonna cost you a little over $3,000, but what you're getting over here is a beast PC that can pretty much handle everything you throw at it. Once again, I'll drop a link to all the parts mentioned in this video. If you guys enjoyed it, drop a like, and if you didn't, you know what to do. Thanks again for watching. As always, I will see you in the next one.